welcome to another Writerly Witterings. I'm Mike Jex, I'm the author of the Templar series, which is all these books here and all these books down here, loads and loads of books, um, but I've also written a few other books more recently with a modern day act of vengeance, which is a chase spy novel really, um, and I've written Rebellion's Message, which comes out shortly, which is all about the time of Bloody Mary, just before Queen Elizabeth. So I've written a fair number of different books. The latest book I'm writing is all about the Crusades. But this video is not about the book or writing as such. This video is about what I'm doing in terms of getting the book written. See, the thing is, many years ago I suffered the uh, difficulty, let us say, of having a computer fail. Now, I've had computers all my working life. I've spent uh, 13 years working in the computer industry before I started writing and that was all very delightful. So when my first computer went wrong I was very much still um, a computer standard type of person and I had most things backed up but the backups were all put onto floppy disks ages ago this is. And the difficulty with floppy disks is that um, different floppy disk drives and readers work on each disk. If you take a disk from one uh, machine and put it into another one, it may well not work because the heads on the disk drives used to actually touch the disks. So friction would set in and every now and again the heads would become unaligned with the information that was on the disks. I had that. I had a computer that um, the heads on the disk drives got very badly aligned after some time. I had no idea. So that all of the floppy disks I backed up with that computer were really no good at all. When that computer died I was then left with a significant issue in terms of no information for any of the past books. So the very first book I wrote for example has gone. There's no way I can, find, I can get that back. As a result of some other computer difficulties, I gave up on Windows and DOS and went over to Apple computers, and they have served me very well for the last ooh, 10 to 15 years, I guess. Um, however, last year I had three major problems. The first problem wasn't Apple's fault. That was more the responsibility of my daughter, who tipped a glass of water over my laptop. So that machine died and had to be replaced. Then in a bit later on in the year, I had a small glitch on my main computer, my iMac, and I realised there was a glitch and so I immediately did what any sensible computer person would do and restored all my data from the backup disk because I had a lovely bit of um, software from Apple which backed up everything onto a separate disk drive. That was great except that the disk drive itself was corrupt so I overwrote all of my disk with a disk that was blank. That was not good, that was not a happy day. Um, that computer then suffered a catastrophic fault on its hardware a little while later, and so I lost all the data. I'd, well, I didn't lose all the data. I'd been carefully backing up everything. But it was still deeply irritating, because it's not so much losing information, emails, and photos when a computer goes wrong. The main problem about a computer going wrong is that it takes you two to three weeks to reset up all the passwords. You've got to find all of the basic information that you continually look at and every now and again you try to find something on um, a search engine and you just get, you realize that actually that was set up sometime before and you haven't got that on the current search engine. It's just a pain. I reckon it cost me about um, two and a half to three months last year of work just trying to get things working. So this year I thought I'm going to do something different. I'm going to write my book actually out by hand. So I've spoken to some nice people. This is um, a company, Cult Pens, who have helped me an inordinate amount over the years with my stationery. And they do various different um, types of stationery. They do different types of notebook, paper, pen, pencil, anything you can imagine that you need for an office, they've got it. Um, they don't pay me to say all this, however they have given me samples in the past for me to look at, but um, I'm not paid to sponsor them or anything. It's just I find them really, really good, so I like to sing their praises. One thing they do is Atoma. Now, I thought it would be really good for a firm to deal with an author and say, look, this is how he uses our products. So I got in touch with Atoma, 
and they quite happily said, yes, we'd be delighted to give you um, a whole bunch of paper and allow you to use our paper and our notepads to produce your next book. So they gave me this lovely leather-covered notepad, and they gave, well, I actually bought most of these, um, but the thing I really like is, this is one thing I use for my standard filing system, so I've got the perfect murder here, it's an outline for a, for a short story that hopefully will come out with the detection club before too long. What happens with the Toma is everything is removable and adjustable. You have these strange little sort of, I don't know how clearly you can see it there, but T-shaped um, holes cut out of the pages and um, the file separator dividers and so on. So you can remove the sheets when you want and put them back in anywhere else. You just pull them out and then press them back in. I'm going to put that back where it was because it makes sense where it was. I find them really, really useful. It's a little bit difficult to get across how they work without pulling one apart, so I've got the basics of one here that I have pulled apart for you. And you can see that you've got the front and back cover and then these, this series of rings. And that's all they are, they're just rings. These ones are clear plastic. They do them in all forms. I tend to use the metal ones because I just like the look of them but uh, that's just me being picky. That's the way I work. So, I've set out to write this new book on paper. I have my paper. Of course, what you need to have then is a surface to write on. Now, this is my standing desk. I like working here, but every now and again I like to go and work somewhere else. If the weather's nice, I intend working in the garden. So I made myself this, which is a writing slope. All it is is two pieces of shoe leather glued together really hard. Uh, a friend of mine over the road, Matt Norman, uh, sorry, Matt Payne, uh, advised me on doing this because he's a master saddle worker and bridle maker. Very simple. I can have that at various different angles just by using this uh, bridge that I put underneath it. And I, that means I can take my paper with me wherever I go. Wonderful, very useful. Of course, I need to write with something. And the first thing is... I need to have ink. I spoke to Diamine Inks. These are the chaps. I use their inks all the time anyway, mainly because they've got the biggest selection. They've got 103 different colours and shades of ink in their basic range, which goes from sapphire blue to oh, what have we got? autumn oak, um, Tyrian purple. There is a huge amount of ink here. Currently, that's one of my favourites, Syrah, or Sierra, I'm not too sure how you pronounce it, but it's a gorgeous deep red, um, berry red type of colour, absolutely wonderful to write with. Twilight is nice, um, Oxblood is really good, Acer Blue is my favourite blue of all right now, it's absolutely gorgeous, almost electric. Um, so, Diamine, I spoke to them, they said yeah they'd be interested, so they've sent me one of each of their inks, 103 different colours and shades, this is the first section. That's all very well. Now, people who know me know that I love fountain pens, so that's why the ink. But they also know that I really adore my Visconti. I've got a new Visconti. I spoke to Dante Del Vecchio, the owner of Visconti, when I started thinking about this project. And I explained to him that the problem that I had with my old Homo sapiens was I could not see how much ink there was in it. So every now and again I'd be out and about and the pen would run out. Now, I've been using this, a travelling inkwell, for some time. It's a Visconti design thing. Uh, it is just wonderful. Whatever type of ink you want, whatever type of pen, you fill it with your ink. Um, it's got a sort of conical rubber tube so you can put any pen into it and load the pen and it won't squirt ink all over you. Very, very convenient, very useful. But um, even so, it's a bit of a pain. So I suggested to Mr. Del Vecchio that it would be really useful for me if he had a pen that had a clear barrel so that I could see the colour of the ink and also how much ink there was left in it. So he made this for me. It's a one-off. Um, perhaps if people express enough interest in it, he may decide to make more of them and have them generally for sale. But I just adore it. It's got the standard bayonet fit that Visconti pens have, so it's just a 
one fifth of a turn and it locks in place. It's never come out of its housing form. I, I just think it's brilliant. It's got a really strong um, clip which is spring loaded and that holds it very, very um, firmly. I've never lost a Visconti pen. Uh, it's also got a massive ink reservoir. It's got a it, they call it a, um, a dual reservoir power filler, I think. But what happens is you unscrew this cap here and then pull it out and inside this there is a cylinder that's basically parallel sided apart from at the bottom where there's a flare. So you pull out the plunger, it's got a one-way valve in it, put it into the ink, push the plunger all the way back down and the one-way valve creates um, a vacuum behind it going down this cylinder so that by the time the thing gets to the flare at the bottom it's creating quite a vacuum. It hits the flare, that, that breaks the vacuum and it sucks ink all the way up into the reservoir. And I, I don't know exactly how much it holds but I think it's about 5 mil, mils. It's a vast amount. It's more than I can use in a day of solid writing. It's also, for me, one of the best pens because it's not all shiny and gleamy. This dull matte colour comes across because the pen's made from um, volcanic lava from Mount Etna, so it is pretty much indestructible. You cannot scratch it or damage it. So that's that. I've got paper, pen, inks. I've got my writing desk. So what I'm going to be doing for the next few months is I'm going to be tweeting every day about the type of ink I'm using. I'm going to be producing blogs on writerlywitterings.com, which you can look at, which will have a summary of the way that the work is going with characterization, with uh, discovering landscape, all of the different aspects of writing a book I'll be talking about. At the same time I'll also be producing YouTube videos which will go into a little bit more detail about how the work's going and what's happening with the writing but also with the other things that I'm doing. I'm giving talk, I'm giving some lessons, I suppose talks, lessons, workshops, whatever you want to call them, at the Swanick Writers School in August. Um, I'm going to be judging some competitions this year. I've got the Padden Prize this week. I've got an, another one for Impress Books, the Impress Prize, later on in the year in October. That's going to be fun because I'm chairman of the judges there. Um, and then I've also got all the other things to do because I've got a book coming out in April, another one in May, June. I've got another book coming out in August. So I'll be talking about those things as well. And hopefully it'll all be of interest. I do hope so, um, and I'll speak to you soon. Don't forget, if you like this video, if you're interested in all of this, do um, like the video, uh, tell your friends about it if they're likely to, to enjoy this sort of thing. Um, please also subscribe if you want to keep on following, it makes it a lot easier for all sides. And hopefully, if that's all works, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks very much for your help. Cheers, take care.